it's a lot like Photoshop or CAD into one that allows you to draw, um, paint, zoom in, zoom out on drawing. So let's say, for example, I was on site and I have to make notes on this drawing. Within the application, on the left-hand side, you have all of your different um, devices to, to draw or write or paint with. And along the right-hand side, you can see here I've got colors. Another thing that we really like about this, it has layers. So I can put layers on top of my drawing. The beauty of having layers, if you work a CAD or Photoshop or Visio or any of these um, design pieces of software, is I can turn layers on and off. So I can make them visible or invisible right here on the side. So once I make an edit within this piece of software, if I'm on site and I make a two perspective of the room, let's say with the colors that I want on the wall, I can email right from the iPad to the client. I can have my loaded in cut sheet in here, so it's already got my letterhead on it. Um, there's a number of apps that allow you to draw measurements and put comments directly onto photographs as you take them. Three of the more popular applications for this is My Measure, Photo Measures, and GraphPad. How many people actually have AutoCAD as a desktop application? Okay, quite a few. How many people get sent AutoCAD drawings, can't open them up, and then call back and ask for a PDF? I'm sure a lot as well. Bottom of the screen here is your tool toolbar. We've got layers, we've got a back and a forwards arrow. In 90% of all applications, that means undo and redo. We've got a perspective button. So if you look here, I've got front, top, right, back, bottom, left. So if I hit the front right now, it's gonna give me a immediate front perspective. I've got a paint application on here as well, so I can draw, make notes, paint, um, I can write some text. And again, the same way you have a Sketchbook Pro, you can um, edit and create drawings and email them to the client instantly, you can do the exact same thing here. So I can take a CAD drawing, I can make notes to the drawing, I can save it and I can email it back to the client or engineer to get feedback. Um, it'll keep track of those comments within the file, so if you're sending it back and forth, you can see um, you know, a linear, based on date, notes and comments and everything that you've discussed based on this drawing. Using two fingers or one finger, I can really <coughs> pull this drawing you know, take a look inside it and, you know, I can really get into the whole thing. It's a free application. It's a lot different than having a desktop and, you know, AutoCAD not only gets expensive buying the software, but it gets very expensive with maintaining it and keeping it to work, so. So this is House, which is a collaborative platform for home remodeling and design. This app allows you to browse and search the largest database of home photos and ideas in the world. You can save them to idea books, add your own comments, um, share them, collaborate with coworkers, clients. In addition to that, you can build your own brand and upload photographs from your own projects, tag them with your region, city, company name, and so on. On your desktop, you can have a folder that's called Dropbox. And whatever you pull into this Dropbox folder is gonna be synced to the cloud. It's gonna be synced to the internet, which is in turn going to sync to any other device that you install Dropbox on, for example, your iPad or your iPhone. And it's as simple as dragging it from one folder on your computer into the folder, into the Dropbox folder on your desktop. As long as I've got my iPhone, iPad, laptop, or I'm sitting at my desktop at work, I've always got access to those files. You log into the application, you say, hey, I want to share this folder of information with Rosa Luna, and then I simply type in Rosa Luna's email address, hit send, she gets an email that says, hey, Charles Stuckman would like to share a Dropbox folder with you. And now whatever I see in there, she sees in there. And not only do I see it there, I see it on all my devices. It's generally worth it to spend a nine or $10 a month and have 100 gigabytes worth of storage in your Dropbox. This way it's not even an issue. Evernote is amazing. I use it pretty much all the time. It's completely cleaned up my, my desktop, my physical desktop, as far as like scraps of notes and organizing my information. What Evernote is, it's an app that stores notes, websites, and blogs that you want to store and read later, files and images, and it's all through this one program. It syncs across all of your systems, so in a similar way that you would have Dropbox installed on your iPhone and your um, iPad and your desktop, you would have Evernote installed in those same places, and it syncs your, your notes and photos and images the exact same way. It's really nice because you can take notes on it and then there's a button that you press if you want to record audio, you want to record what's happening around you as you're taking notes. It'll save that audio file directly into that note. You can do the same things with images. Um, you can then organize your notes into notebooks. So all your notes basically are indexed as words. So if you want to search, hey, last year I want to search on the Ross Residence Project, you can type that in and even your hand written notes will be indexed in that search. And Ultimate, 
for those of you who are not crazy <coughs> about typing your notes, is a companion application that allows you to write notes with a stylus or with your finger directly onto the iPad. The stylus is something that you can buy separately, or how can you it? So the styluses are made by many different companies. For example, this one is a Sony one. But generally, what you'll see consistently amongst all of them is it's like a rubber. Um, it feels like a pencil eraser on the one hand side, you know, and it's dual purpose. It's that you're not going to scratch your glass, so it glides nicely along the screen. Keynote, as I said, it's a powerful presentation tool that makes it easy to create, deliver, and share stunning presentations on your iPad. It is PowerPoint, but it's much simpler and much more powerful. It's like a six-dollar program. It comes preloaded with twelve um, Apple design themes, so it looks very like seamless across the board. All of your slides are very; they have consistent fonts and colors and textures. The program also has um, the transitional motions that you've seen as we're going from slide to slide here. And it's great too because then if you're done with it, you need to share it with somebody who's using PowerPoint, for example, and you just export it as a PowerPoint file, send it to them, and then they can then use it as a PowerPoint file. PowerPoint doesn't always, um, if you bring a picture in, it doesn't always bring the picture into PowerPoint. It leaves the picture here and just associates with the link saying, That's hey, fine. use this picture in this other folder. Keynote specifically doesn't do that. It stores all of the images and, okay. and files and everything within the application. So all you need is that one file and you've got all the resources built into it. You know, back in the day, if you had, let's say you got an email on your desktop and you got an email on your cell phone and they're the same email. If you read that email on your desktop, it didn't mark it as read on your phone. If you delete it on your desktop, it didn't delete it from your phone. That's an older way of email. It's called POP. And it stands for Post Office Protocol. So inherently, that just sounds kind of primitive, you know. <laughs> um, the new version is called, it's another service called IMAP, and natively Google allows you to use IMAP, which is normally something you have to pay for. And what that means is, if I check an email on my phone, and I mark it as red, it's also going to mark it as red in all my other places, all my other devices. This is Gmail or Google Apps, either, either one of those will work. I think Yahoo also offers uh, IMAP as well. I'm not sure exactly how they work, because I don't use it, but I think they offer it. They do. They do? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I have an exchange server. Right. Um, can I do that? Can you sync yeah. using Exchange? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can, before you could only have one Exchange account, which meant one Gmail account, now you can add. So let's say you have a personal Gmail and you want to have that feature to sync all my contacts and my calendars and my emails. Yes, you can have multiple of those accounts now. So take a screenshot with your iPad. So that's basically to capture the image that is on the screen. You simply press the home button and the lock or sleep button at the exact same time. Yeah, what do you do with it after you do it? Well, it saves into your, it saves your photo library, but it's, it's really helpful if like, you're having a problem with your iPad and you have to explain to someone, like, hey, this is what the error message I'm seeing. You know, in reality, that's what I think it's most useful for. I use it because I read a lot of digital magazines. or if I'm Which don't allow you to save. I capture that and then drop the photo into an Evernote file for, like, design ideas. Look at you. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the title bar jump. At the top of your screen, you'll always see this black bar right at the top. It says, it generally says, like, whether or not you have Wi-Fi, the time that it is, how much battery you have left. Um, anytime you're on a scrolling page, if you're on the website or on a blog and you're way down at the bottom and you want to go back to the top, you can just press that button and it'll jump directly back to the top. So to create folders, this is pretty simple. You simply press and hold down any of the icons on your desktop. After you've been holding them for a few seconds, they'll all start to jiggle. Yeah. You can then drag one. And then I just take it and I put it on top of the other one. And it's going to create a folder for me. And it already, it'll go ahead and give you a name here, and you can rename it based on whatever you're And that's for organizing your apps. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes, and that's also, exactly. Yes. And that's also the same for the iPhone as well. How do you make those icons a little bit larger? So when you do this, you can actually leave the entertainment if your eyesight is not it. If you want to make anything larger on here, you can go to settings, and you can increase the actual size of the icon and size of the fonts. See here in the upper left-hand corner, there's a round little X. That X is not normally there, but when you press and hold the icon and they all start jiggling, they'll appear. And if you tap the X, that's how you delete applications you no longer want. When you double click the home button. So this right here. So these are all of the programs that are currently running on this iPad. I've noticed that some of my friends, they'll say, oh, when I first got my iPhone, it was running so fast. And I feel like now that I've had it for a while, it's not running as smoothly. And then I go and I look at their running applications and they literally have every application <laughs> they've ever used running. 
Um, so if you press and hold in this screen, it'll give you all of these X's. These do not delete the programs. These just turn them off so that you're no longer running them. Um, you go to your settings icon, you go to general, and you turn on um, multitasking here. It then lets you use four or five fingers to pinch the home screen. So in the same way that you pinch to zoom, if you use all fingers, it takes you directly to your home screen, to your desktop. If you pray, place um, four or five fingers on the screen and then press up in the same way that if you press the do double click the home button, it'll show you the multitasking bar down at the bottom. And then it also lets you swipe between current applications that you have running by just putting your hand on it and swiping to the left or the right. If you press and hold any of the letters, or most of the letters, not all of them, a lot of the letters, they'll show you different accents and symbols that are hidden underneath. If you press and hold any of the letters, like press and hold the N, and you want to put a tilde on top of it, it'll show you your international keyboard so you can those things. When you're using your camera, you can tap a subject to focus and meter the light to that subject. Do you see all those little boxes? See how it's auto bringing me up these boxes here? Mm -hmm. I can click to have a more specific focus, that's all, and to meter the light. So if I want that weird guy Jordan sitting in the back that works with us, <laughs> that's pretty much it. If you go to your settings icon and you scroll down to the location services, it's great because in one way you know exactly where you were when you took that photograph or when you made that sketch in the sketch or when you took a note on Evernote. It's not so great in that it wears down your battery. So if, for example, you don't necessarily care if Keynote knows where you are, you can go in here and then turn it off on applications that you don't want it running on because you don't need it running on. So what we do yeah. is we provide automation at home. Not only can you, you know, do all these business and awesome things from your iPad, but we also give people the ability to control their home from the iPad. Watch, listen, security, comfort, and lights. So to give you an example, you know, I think I, I have that light configured onto this iPad. So if I hit light, you'll see it's going to dim down. <laughs> so this actually turns into the remote for the whole house. And not only can, can I control individual lights, but I can have scenes. So let's say I want to have a dining scene. I can hit one button that's going to set all my lights to a preset level that we discussed with the client, put on a particular um, radio station or a particular music, and every night that client knows I hit this one button or I hit this one button on my iPad and it sets the whole mood.